This is the Xperia Pro i, Sony's newest flagship. It's the second phone in their Pro lineup. It's a mainstream smartphone that is catering to photography buffs, and Sony is expecting that they'll use it as a daily driver. It's based on the Xperia 1 Mark III, but aside from the standout design and the premium hardware, the most notable thing about it is probably its camera sensor. It's one of the biggest ones that we've seen in a smartphone. We got a chance to take a look at it early on, and these are our first impressions. The Pro i has a subtle frosted back protected by Gorilla Glass. While the phone has the same tall drink of water form factor of previous Xperia's, there is a noticeable change in design. First, you have the impressive lens of the main camera, which is significantly larger than its siblings. Then there is the unique design of the frame. Everything else is premium too. There is a shutter key like on previous Xperia phones. But this one has been redesigned, and it has a nicer tactile response, so we found ourselves using it a lot more than the virtual shutter button. There's Gorilla Glass Victus on the front, IP68 protection, and it feels solid in the hand, weighing in at 211 grams. On the front, the 6.5-inch OLED has the classic Xperia 21x9 form factor, a 4K resolution, and a 120Hz refresh rate, just like on the Xperia 1 Mark III. They've got everything you'd want in terms of audio, too. There's a headphone jack, which is almost unheard of on a flagship, and stereo speakers. The Xperia sports a good-sized 4,500 mAh battery. Its 30-watt charger can get it up to 50% in half an hour, which is alright. Unfortunately, there is no wireless charging on this one. The phone will sport Android 11 with Xperia UI on top. Xperia's have a rather clean Android setup, and here you'll see the biggest Sony touches with their camera apps. The chipset is Qualcomm Snapdragon 888 5G, and the phone will come with 12 gigs of RAM and 512 gigs of storage. There is also a card slot if you need extra storage. So far, everything on this phone screams that it is centered around a photography and videography experience. So what is the camera setup actually like? You have three 12 megapixel sensors, an ultrawide, a telephoto with two times zoom and OIS, and a main camera with a one inch type sensor, phase detection autofocus, and a dual aperture, which easily makes it one of the most unique camera sensors used in a smartphone. The sensor is the same 20 megapixel one inch imager that you'll find in the latest Sony RX100. But instead of using the entire thing, Sony is only using the megapixels in the center. So while technically it is a one inch type sensor, its results are equivalent to a smaller one, albeit one with large pixels. The first pictures we took with the main camera are great, with extremely natural processing and very organic looking detail. The dynamic range should be wider than previous Xperia's, and low light photos should be markedly better too. At first glance, the shots are bright, lively, and with nice colors. The Xperia has a dual f2.0 and f4.0 aperture, which is rare in the smartphone world. With a smaller aperture, you'll have more depth in the background and sharper surroundings while the larger f2.0 aperture will give you a softer, defocused background. Unfortunately, the variable aperture does not work automatically as it did on Samsung phones in the past. Instead, you are in direct control of which aperture is used for each shot. Sony has included two videography apps and a photography pro app. While at first that sounds excessive, it may potentially give videographers and photographers a lot more control than on many other smartphones. Most flagships focus a lot on their camera experience. But rarely do you get a phone that offers you so much flexibility and so many options when it comes to photography and videography. Our first impressions of using the Xperia Pro i were great, and without pixel peeping, we really liked the quality of the photos. So is this the camera phone to rule them all? And what is it like to use aside from, you know, the cameras? We're gonna find that out after some more in-depth testing. So if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments down below and we'll try to get to them in the full review. Subscribe so you don't miss it, and I'll see you guys next time.